Hey, how's it going? I'm Ida Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right. Okay, so I'm sure you can sort of see from behind me things have started, if not being packed, then at least being sorted and organised. Um, just sort of a, a packing phase, I believe, at least it's a packing phase for me <laughs> this particular time, uh, partly because I don't have any cardboard boxes yet. Um, for various reasons, I have yet to acquire any cardboard boxes. Um, I was going to at the end of the week, um, but unfortunately other things kind of got in the way of that, and I have nothing to pack anything into at the moment. But I have an opportunity to pick up some stuff tomorrow, so hopefully from tomorrow things will actually start getting boxed up, <laughs> which is uh, which is good. Um, stressful, but good. It should, it should be fine. It, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> um, so this is the next part of the home ownership journey. So. Last time, I believe I talked about having my offer accepted and how stressful it was not having any money, <laughs> all my savings going. Um, so since then, I've had some information packs through, letting me know various bits and pieces. Um, I had my home, um, my home survey thing <laughs> done. <laughs> my, my brain may still be a little bit foggy, um, which didn't show up anything that I wasn't expecting it to show up, so I'm really happy to have been forward with that. Um, some of my searches and stuff have started coming back as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, the proposed completion date is about five, six days from this video being filmed. Um, actually, the day this video will be going up, um, fingers crossed, all being well, should be my completion date. Um, one thing that might hiccup that up a little bit is um, the closing letter from my help to buy was supposed to arrive within five working days. It didn't, and the first opportunity I had to go into my bank and do anything about that was Saturday. Um, and my solicitor is not open at the weekend. <laughs> um, so I won't be able to get that to them till tomorrow, and that might obviously cause a slight delay in everything, which hopefully won't be, you know, really bad. But yeah, it's not, it's not the greatest. Uh, feeling in the world when there are already so many uncertainties and everything else going on. Um, so I have given my landlord my month's notice. Um, so I'm paid up here until the 15th of April, um, which is which is good because that gives me a little bit of leeway for things going wrong and to sort things and eh, everything else. Uh, so at the moment my head is full of thoughts of getting what 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 do I need to transfer over from this property to to the next property in terms of uh, bills um, and the council pack and uh, various things like that and what things I want to start new um, with the new property so I, I, don't, I don't need tenants insurance anymore but I'm going to have contents insurance instead because it's a leasehold so I don't need the buildings insurance because that's included in my um, my service charges um, and I've had the breakdown from that and I'm, I'm more happy that that's included in my service charges and I know who uh, the building insurance for the leaseholder is with and stuff like that because that's, that's all the information you need to know. It's like this big pack of information and some of the information I was kind of like, I'm not entirely sure I, I need this, but I, I'm, in the same time, I do need this because this is proof that this is something that actually is relevant and does actually exist. So I need to say that I've seen it and I need to say that I have a copy of it. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So, yeah, certain things like I'm planning to go to a new internet provider um, just because it's going to be slightly cheaper to do that. Um, and part of the reason I went with Sky here, even though Sky, even at the time, I knew wasn't necessarily one of the cheaper ones to be going with, uh, was because I was helped in setting up all my um, stuff here through the uh, affiliated thing with the estate agent that I was going through. Um, and that included helping me sort out the tenants insurance, which I never really needed before this place. <laughs> um, I, I Maybe I had it um, when I was living with the ex, but I'm fairly sure this is the first time I've ever absolutely 100% had to have it. Um, I think before it was always sort of an option, but nobody really presented you that option. This was the first property where I was actually told, no, you have to have this. We want you to have this. Pay, please, please have this and please pay for this. Um, which is absolutely fine because, you know, it's just one of those things you have to deal with. Um, but in sort of like going through that process and getting that set up through whatever associated company with the estate agent that it was that I was going through with, they're also like, oh yeah, we can get you onto this really good uh, deal with the Sky. And to be fair, it's, it's been a fairly good deal for the last two years. But this year it's going to hike itself all the way up <laughs> um, to, to a different price. And I'm like, nah, I'm fine. Yeah, Sky is all right as a foreground provider, but it's not worth more than I'm, I'm currently paying for it. Um, especially because I don't make phone calls, I don't have a TV package because I don't watch TV, I watch things online. Um, so it doesn't make any sense to me to sort of stick with Sky when I could get the same quality of internet from a cheaper provider. <laughs> and that's nothing, that's nothing against Sky themselves, they're not a bad internet provider, but in terms of the type of internet that I'm currently getting from them, yeah, I've, I've experienced the same quality from Plusnet in the past, and Plusnet is a, <laughs> definitely a lot cheaper, <laughs> um, although it's not necessarily Plusnet that I'm going with. Now, um, I'm still in the process of trying to decide exactly who I am going to go with, and it's definitely going to be unlimited because, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> when I first moved out, that's the thing, when I first moved out um, on, into my own, into my so the first flat that I rented, um, I was with Plusnet then. Um, and I was initially on one of their limited, um, like like so you get you get so much data a month, um, which was you know a, a fairly good price. Um, but the more I sort of started using the internet, and the more I sort of became a sort of internet consumer. Um, I realise that it's unlimited or it's nothing. You can't have a certain amount of data for the amount that I use and for the amount that I do online. I do need that sort of freedom to just go, yeah, I need all the internet. I don't need it to be capped. I just need all the internet. Um, so yeah, it's, it's finding a cheap, unlimited <laughs> service. Um, where the phone line is included or the phone line rental is included um, because even, and, and, and I don't need one which also includes like call rates because I have a mobile, I don't have a house phone and I'm not planning to have a house phone so even though I will have a house number which I will put onto things because you kind of have to um, my mobile room, they're like, yeah, you, there's no point trying to contact me through that because I don't actually exist. There's no phone. It's not connected to a phone. It does not need to be connected to a phone. Um, and that's and that's the thing. You can get like cheaper internet where if you're not using a house phone for anything, then it doesn't matter that actually those call rates are probably quite expensive because you're not using the calls. <laughs> Um, and because you're not using the calls, actually, it's worth going with that because you're going to get the cheaper internet. And, you know, it just it just makes sense not to worry whether or not the calls are included. Um, if, if the internet's the only bit that you're going to be using and the internet is a decent price, 
um, then there's no reason not to consider it and not to go not to go with it. Um, so as I said, I'm still sort of comparing things at the moment. It's a little bit tricky because I can't actually start saying, yes, I, I'm going definitely forward with this because I still don't know when I'm going to have property. Um, <laughs> and if I don't have the property, then there are lots of things I can't sort out. Um, I know in terms of like my gas and electric, I want to take the company I'm with now with me um, because um, I pay a monthly fixed rate with them and I've got a little bit of credit in reserve. <laughs> So that will like allow me to sort of like figure out what I'm doing uh, in terms of because I'm I'm going to be going from electric heating, which is what I've got here, to gas central heating, which um, obviously the 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 amount of money that you spend on heating isn't going to drastically change, um, or rather the, the amount that you're spending on gas is going to go up, and the amount that you're spending on electricity is going to go down. Uh, so. Uh, having that sort of like a little bit hope I mean it should it should transfer with me in one way or another it should transfer with, uh, with me so I can figure things out um hopefully <laughs> she says um I mean I'm I'm at the moment kind of going with the, the idea that this is this is going to be like a nice easy transition um, in terms of bills and and everything like that but I know from experience it's not always um I mean, certain things are easier to transfer than, than other things, um, but obviously, you know, you've got to, you've got to be aware that sometimes things aren't, aren't necessarily going to go smoothly, certain things aren't necessarily going to transfer over right away, um, I mean, council tax is one of the easiest things to sort, um, yeah, <laughs> just, just need to register a change of address and it's fine, it's, I've never really had any problems with that one, uh, likewise, I do pay for a TV license because I do use um, BBC iPlayer for various things. So again, that will transfer over with me. Um, so that shouldn't be much of a problem. That should be fairly straightforward and nice and easy to sort and, and whatever else. Um, and then it's sort of it's sort of just everything else. Um, so water, water is usually fairly straightforward. Um, so yeah. Uh, the gas and electricity is the, the one that I'm sort of a little bit less certain about because I've never moved my gas and electricity with me before. Um, I've always just gone, oh, I'm going to finish it off here and then I'm going to start the new place with whatever the new place is already under. And then if I want to change it later, I can. Um, whereas this time I kind of like, you know, I've got like a lot of credit <laughs> stockpiled <laughs> with this current company. <laughs> It would be a bit stupid not to take that with me if I can take it with me. You, you can um, you can move it with you. I'm pretty sure I can move it with with me. I it's got a um, are you moving thing attached to it, so I'm I'm pretty happy that I can move it with me. Um, and I mean, part of the reason why I haven't sort of moved things with me in the past is. The first property I was with, it was key meters. Uh, so you had like a little, uh, you just pay as you go uh, keys and you just topped it up as you used it. The second property that I lived at uh, was standard monthly bills. Uh, then I went into shared housing and that was just included in my rent. Um, then I went back to key meters again and then here it's uh, monthly bills or quarterly bills, monthly bills for me, but it could be, I think it was quarterly bills at the other place, um, it's monthly bills, or I pay monthly here, so, because it's all been all of these different things, um, I've not really had the opportunity to take it with me before, but as I said, there, there's definite incentive for me to take it with me this time, um, and then just keep on top of everything like I've been doing at the moment, and then figure out, you know, <laughs> how cost effective everything is and if my bill has to change um, and I think if my rate does go up by more than what I was paying um, prior to because it's just recently gone down as well because my my average monthly usage isn't as high as my monthly payments were hence building up all that credit um, so if it goes up above what it previously was um, then I might sort of look to change providers and, and find a cheaper 
gas electric company um but as it is at the moment it doesn't make any sense to sort of do that and as long as i can sort of monitor what my usage is and then how that's going which i'm trying to do my best to try and keep on top of this year um well that's from from april of last year i think i've been fairly good at sending them a meeting reading every single month <laughs> I'm like, this is what I'm actually using, please. <laughs> this is my actual usage. Um, so yeah, it's it's a lot of stuff that I have to do and I have to sort and I have to organise and having like two weeks uh, overlap between the two properties, which hopefully be a full two weeks of overlap. So two, yeah, it's rough, roughly two weeks of overlap between the two properties. Um, and hopefully having that all give me the opportunity I need to get everything I need sorted. So if I move into the new property, um, everything will be ready and set up and it'll be as stress-free as possible. Um, <laughs> I say now, I have no idea how badly it's probably going to go. I mean, I've never had a bad move with it. I've never had a bad move with it. So it should all be fine and, and good and yeah. I'm focused in my mind as to how things should go and how things should be at this point, I think. Um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yay. Um, all right, I'm not sure what else I need to say about this one. I, I feel like this month has sort of focused very much on planning ahead, planning for the actual move, uh, which I guess is where my mind is with it now, because um, it, it's, it's definitely going to happen. <laughs> like, short of some catastrophe, catastrophe happening, like, sometime in the next few days, it is definitely going to happen now, which is, yeah. <laughs> I think I think the reality is sort of starting to to sink in a, a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed for it all being as smooth and easy-ish as I hope it's going to be, but you know, I, who knows. <laughs> all right, so uh, the next one I'm going to be updating you guys a little bit uh, in regards to Ida Reads. Um, obviously I sort of said at the beginning of the year that I'm hoping to bring the series back at some point um, and I just want to update you guys and let you guys know sort of some of the ideas and thoughts I've had about it uh, since then and why it hasn't started again yet and whether or not it's going to at all. Um, so I hope you guys found this one sort of interesting. I hope you guys are looking forward to the next one and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.